In the previous couple of videos, I talked about the problem of heteroscedasticity, which could arise when the variance of OLS is not constant. That is, our variance of residuals given x, it's uh, not constant, but it's a function of the x variables in the model. So, so far we talked about uh, heteroscedasticity and correcting for heteroscedasticity using robust standard errors. But so far, I did not introduce you to any formal tests to test for the existence of uh, heteroscedasticity in our model. And this is what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to talk about one test that can be used to test for heteroscedasticity in the model. And I'm going to talk about the broish pagan uh, test for heteroscedasticity. So for example, this is our model, then our homoscedasticity assumption says that the variance of this error term given these axes is a constant, right? Which means that this error term does not depend on any of these x variables. On the other hand, if the variance is not constant and is a function of any of these x variables, that is, we have heteroscedasticity in the model, then our sigma squared or the variance it will be a function of all these x variables in the model. So if this is the case, then what we can do is, so we can estimate our model and then calculate the square of residuals and after that we can regress those residuals on these x variables. And then if any of these coefficient value is statistically significant, we can say that yes, this variance it is a function of these x variables and if all of these x variables that is these delta coefficients that we will get will be statistically insignificant then we can say that we have homoscedasticity in a model so what we can do is uh, we can either use t-test to test for all the individual coefficients or we can use joint statistical significance of all these coefficient values using an f-test and we know f-test uh, tests for the joint significance of all of these variables and if any of these variables is statistically significant that is if any of these variables is significant determinant of our dependent variable we will reject our null hypothesis so we can apply uh, this algorithm to find whether there is heteroscedasticity in the model or not and we can test the hypothesis here that whether any of these coefficient values is statistically significant. This is exactly what I'm going to do in the example. I'm going to regress my model and then extract uh, these residuals from the model and I'm going to regress uh, square of these residuals on all the explanatory variables and then I'm going to test this null hypothesis. Okay, so I'm here in uh, R and uh, I'm using this example for house prices and I'm going to regress two models. In the first model, the prices are represented in levels and all the explanatory variables are represented in levels as well. In the second model, I'm going to use log log model and I'm going to take the logarithm of a variable if it can be taken. I can get the Bruch Pagan test in two ways. The first way is I'm going to get the residuals of our first level level model and then I'm going to square it up and then regress the residuals on um, all the explanatory variables and then I'm going to look at the p-value. As we can see here, the p-value is about 0.002, which is a strong evidence against our null hypothesis. So we reject our null hypothesis and conclude that there is a problem of hetero scedasticity in the model. We can see that lot size is statistically significant but we are more interested in uh, the f-test and the f-test is telling us that at least one of these explanatory variables is statistically significantly associated with the residuals or the square of residuals. So we conclude that there is some heteroscedasticity in the model as our residuals are a function of our explanatory variables. Okay, so this was the first way of getting uh, the Bruch Pagan test. A better way to get this uh, test is to use uh, library LM test. And then I'm going to use the function BP test. And at the back of this function, this function is doing the same thing. It's calculating the residuals, squaring them, and then 
using the square of the residuals as a dependent variable and regressing them on uh, all the explanatory variables in the model. So we can go ahead and look at it and we get the same p-value 0.002. Again, the Proush Pagan test is rejecting our null hypothesis and uh, pointing towards uh, the existence of uh, heteroscedasticity in the model. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pass this to my log log model and uh, see whether there is heteroscedasticity in the model or not. So looking at the p-value, we are rejecting the null hypothesis at 0.23 or 23%, which means we fail to reject the null hypothesis for the log log model. So what we got here is that the level level model is uh, showing us that there is some heteroscedasticity in the model, but the log log model is telling us there is no heteroscedasticity in the model. That is our model is homoscedastic. So again, sometimes taking the logarithm of uh, the variables, you can get away with the problem of heteroscedasticity. Okay, so this was the first test that we can use. In the next video, I'm going to talk about another test and then I'm going to show you an example how to test for uh, heteroscedasticity using the white test. All right, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.